At two in the morning, with no phone in the house, one tooth in your head, and a smile that could melt ice. We loved you. You were a joy that made our lives full. Daddy called you princess, because that's just what you are. Despite all the circumstantial evidence against Roy Whiting, the police still didn't have enough evidence to charge him with Sarah's murder. Hopes were pinned on the forensic scientists. They spent five months analyzing samples taken from the Velcro on Sarah's shoe and comparing them with items found in Whiting's van. Among them, his red sweatshirt found in the front seat. The shoe was paramount. Um... Uh, this little tiny ladybird shoe that had been kicked up and down the road for days and days and weeks, it was the key to the conviction of Roy Whiting. The real breakthrough was when we found a fibre on the Velcro strap that matched the fibres that made up the fabric of the red sweatshirt in the van. Now we did that by comparing the two fibres under a comparison microscope. One of these slides has sample of fibres from the red sweatshirt found in Roy Whiting's van. Put that under one side of the microscope. The other slide contains fibres picked off from the shoe, which is thought to be from Sarah Payne. So these are the fibres that were trapped on the Velcro. We put that down the other side of the comparison microscope. So what you can see on the monitor now is a red fiber taken from Sarah Payne's shoe. And on the monitor you can see the exact shade of red and you might just be able to make out very small particles within the fiber that stop it being too shiny. On the other side we have a fiber from the red sweatshirt that was found in Roy Whiting's van. And you can see that it's exactly the same shade of red, it's got the same cross-section and it also has the small particles that stop the fibres becoming too shiny. Over the next few weeks, further tests confirmed the initial results. The fibre from the shoe had come from the red sweatshirt found in Roy Whiting's van. Each one of those processes takes four weeks. So you can imagine, it's not like CSI. <laughs> It's a long, long, slow process and it takes a long time. It's frustrating and it's um, heart-wrenching at times. That link between Sarah's shoe and Whiting's red sweatshirt was just the first breakthrough. Once the red sweatshirt was indicated by the fibres, I could then go ahead and test all the hairs that we found on the sweatshirt, which amounted to 40 hairs, which is an awful lot of DNA testing to do on one item. But in the end, it was worth it because although 39 of those hairs gave no DNA profile whatsoever, one single hair gave a profile that matched fully back to Sarah Payne. The scientific evidence was totally crucial. For the entire length of the inquiry, I've been keeping, fighting to keep an open mind, fighting everyone else to keep an open mind. Uh, but now, but now I knew, I knew Roy Whiting had killed Sarah Payne, definitely. On February the 6th, 2001, Roy Whiting was arrested while in prison when about to complete his sentence for the earlier theft of the car and brought back to Sussex. It was never a case of getting anybody for murdering Sarah. I didn't want anybody in prison. I wanted to know that the person that went to prison was definitely the person 100% sure absolutely no doubts. Roy William Whiting, I'm Detective Sergeant Hinchcliffe and I'm going to charge you. You are charged with the offences that I'm going to read out below. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention now something which you later will learn in court. I wanted to be able to look at that man in the eye, for a jury to be able to say you're guilty and for a judge to be able to say you're going to prison. And after that, for him to go and rot in hell as far as I'm concerned and just never, ever be seen or heard of again. You are charged that on Saturday, the 1st of July, 2000, at Kingston Gorse, West Sussex, you unlawfully took or carried away 
Sarah Evelyn Isabel Pace against her will. And that's contrary to common law. You are also charged that between Saturday the 1st of July 2000 and Monday the 3rd of July 2000 at Kingston Gorse, West Sussex or elsewhere you murdered Sarah Evelyn Isabel Payne. On November the 13th, 2001, Roy Whiting faced a jury at Lewis Crown Court. I was about to see the man that had murdered my daughter. I threw up about two or three times in the morning. I had had nightmares for I don't know how long. And when he came up from the cells and he was this little, dirty, unkempt man that wasn't a monster, that wasn't this thing that I could possibly ever be scared of in my life. And I knew that the only reason that that man picks on children is because there is no way an adult would have him anywhere near him. Before the jury, Whiting claimed he knew nothing about Sarah's disappearance. He claimed he had forgotten precise details of his movements that night and said he'd been set up by the police. I have never been as confident of getting a conviction from anyone. But after three days with the jury being out, I didn't quite have that confidence. I was with Sarah when we got called back into court. We went into court. I don't think I've ever been quite as nervous as I was at that particular stage, and uh, this wonderful young forewoman uh, of the jury, she was asked, uh, how did you find the defendant? And she said in the clearest, loudest voice, guilty! And uh, that was such a relief. When they came through with guilty, I remember a woman on the, on the jury, just, she just cried, just absolutely cried. And for me, it was a sense of relief, absolute relief. And then the judge went into um, all the details, the absolute details of his previous. And that was just horrendous. Before passing sentence, Judge Richard Curtis told Whiting, you are and will remain an absolute menace to any little girl and you are every parent's and grandparent's nightmare come true. Then he made the revelation that the psychiatrist who had seen Whiting after his previous attack had warned that he was a high-risk repeat offender. Sarah's murder had proved the psychiatrist right, the judge said. Hearing that was like a knife ripping right the way through, absolutely. Um, it was like somebody telling me what had happened to my daughter. Moments after Whiting was taken to the cells, Sarah and Michael Payne faced the world's media. This doesn't make us happy, but justice has been done. Sarah can rest in peace now. But let's make sure that this stops happening time and time again. People are being let out of prison when everybody concerned knows that this is going to happen again. Sarah Michael, can you describe that moment when you heard the verdict? I thought of Sarah and nothing else. Come along, Cap. The judge recommended that Whiting spend the rest of his life in prison. I know that there are bad people out there. I know that it was a case of, you know, wrong place, wrong time for her. What I was absolutely devastated and what really knocked me flying was the fact that he'd done it before. I am told constantly that it doesn't happen very often, but I am constantly reminding if it only happens to one child, it is too many. Since the death of her daughter in July 2000, abducted and then murdered while on a family day out, Sarah Payne has fought tirelessly for a change in the law. For parents, schools and carers to have the right to know that convicted paedophiles are in their local area. The government has now agreed that a trial version of the so-called Sarah's Law 
will be introduced in four areas of England. Sarah's law is basically it's about predatory paedophiles. It's about people that are all waiting. If a predator lives in your community, you should be able to go and ask, and somebody should tell you that he is there or she is there. Over the years, Sarah Payne has tackled anyone with influence to get what she believes in and provide a lasting tribute to her daughter. If I had known Roy Whiting lived in that area, there is no way my children would have been out to play. That would have saved my daughter's life. The night 